Volume 4, Welcome to the Library, and this entry on Kaisa, otherwise known as the Councils of Independent Sovereign Affairs, the International, Interplanetary, and Intersystem series of bodies that serve to maintain peace and affairs of state between and across the realms. We shall go over in brief the structure and main functions of this body, as well as a bit of its history. I am the recorder, and as my perceptive patrons and regular visitors know all too well, but for my new guests to the library, this shall only be an overview and introduction to this vital group of diplomats and bureaucrats, with more to explore in the future if there is the interest. So please, do make your voice heard. Moving on to the formation of what would become known as Kaisa, we find its genesis in the aftermath of the Wars of the Spark. As the gods and the peoples of Jamamar began to pick up the pieces after nearly half a millennial war between the various gods and their followers. With major cities and nations remaining largely neutral in the matters of the war, the war's largest effects were seen in the lawless lands between nations and, as such, had a significant impact on the travel and trade networks that were, until that point in time, nearly uninterrupted since the time of the great heroes. As many nations had stayed out of the conflicts due to knowing that no matter the victor between the new and the old gods, any that chose a side would likely be destroyed long before it was ever determined. And because of that, the scale of the conflicts while significant at times, never truly spilled into a proper global conflict. Had it done so, it is very possible that the Wars of the Spark would have been the final chapter of the realms as we know them, as the military capabilities of the various powers was still on its meteoric ascent after the Age of Valor, and this included weapons of mass destruction as researchers and minds ever looked for new ways to apply the newly gained or recovered knowledge to creations of both old and new. Also understood was the fact that along with the weapons and offensive advancements, the arts of defense had grown substantially as well, meaning such weapons would be required to be brought to bear in order to overcome them. Along with the simple fact that there ever was a Jamamar-wide conflict, the now united and consolidated Divine Pantheon would no doubt step in. And none of those considering these affairs wanted to venture a guess of how that would shape the world and her peoples going forward after it. In order to avoid all of these possibilities, the powers of the world met and formed what would become Kaisa. Originally only concerned with Jamamar herself and her moons, the structure of Kaisa was still conceived with the idea of growth in mind. And as such, when the Age of Stars began some centuries later, Kaisa was able to smoothly adapt and grow along with the reach of Jamamar's light. Consisting of a tiered series of councils, Kaisa aims to serve as independent middlemen between the various powers at each of the various tiers of governance, or as it is officially referred to, Reach of Sovereignty, or ROS for short. There are four normal ROS that form the main structure of Kaisa and how it distributes its efforts. They are, from least to greatest, Continental. These are the smallest of the recognized sovereigns, typically active only within their own realm or planet. While they may have some merchants, traders, and diplomats that may deal in a wider area, the government itself does not have significant holdings beyond their own realm. Planetary. This level of sovereignty is more common amongst the new realms of Jamamar as most colonial efforts were made with this level of governance and organization in mind. This level of ROS is that of a realm or a planet and any moons wide. 
but lack full control of the star system that they are a part of. Starbound While this level of ROS is the most common in technicality, due in part to many that would otherwise be classed as a lesser ROS such as planetary, but as they are the only sovereign power in the system, they choose to assume the duties and responsibilities of this level. Of course, due to the expense and effort required, this level of governance is often wholly placed within Kaisa itself, as the planets and realms within a system may not have the ability to conduct the required duties of managing it, the affairs of an entire star system by themselves. Free Well The highest of the ROS ratings so far, and by far the most powerful, many, if not all the major powers of the realm hold this ROS, as many of the colonies founded in the early years of the Age of Stars were settled as extensions of their parent nations, thus extending the ROS of these nations to the fullest possible extent. These powers control multiple systems and may or may not have smaller Kaisa bodies within their organization. The Ancient Empire, who only deals with Kaisa as a free will, has no lesser Kaisa bodies within their territory, but otherwise most systems will have a Kaisa body in place to manage things at the star bound level at a minimum, working with either planets united as a single people, or the lesser Kaisa bodies that serve that level of interpower politics. Those of free will ROS meet and discuss matters, as well as handle the affairs of inter-system governance, in the Grand Council Chambers, currently on the Expedus Primus, along with the other star-bound level powers. Matters of general law or declaration are rare, as Kaisa aims not to be a legislative body as much as a diplomatic body. However, there are some matters, whether by multitude of pre-existing treaties on the matter, or overwhelming consensus to the same effect, that Kaisa acts as the highest, non-divine, arbiter on. Matters such as banned or otherwise blacklisted and forbidden items and practices, such as anything to do with either the Dark Wall or their summoning of Vanson, for example. Also among the Free Wells area of concern are the distribution and allocation of available Coggate stations and resources, as well as the recognition of other powers and the incorporation of them into the realms and Kaisa. Kaisa also serves as the final refuge for justice for those under their guidance, as they have the ability to issue warrants bounties and contracts directly with the Hunters, who serve as the paid enforcement arm of Kaisa. In many cases, a criminal who has made his way across several realms on one world or system will end up being targeted by the planetary or star-bound Kaisa body in this way, as to prevent further harm to the people they are charged to govern and aid. Warrants and bounties can also be escalated and shared rapidly among the various Kaisa members that are involved, leading to a very efficient and cost-effective solution to matters of inter-realm justice or enforcement. Kaisa first expanded into the levels of star-bound and free well governance with the introduction of the Teltechians and their core system of New Soul. After the Scriptorum War, the Ancient Empire was admitted as a single free will tier entity with the voting power proper for the many systems under its control. Normally, voting positions and seats within the Grand Council are gained at the star bound level, as it is seen that each system that is a member of Kaisa will have sufficient variety and size to warrant having such a voice in the matters of the greater realms. 
Starbound Kaisa bodies will send a elected representative to the Ground Council to perform these duties, and often these appointments will be for life. The largest act of legal legislation Kaisa has been a part of, beyond its own creation, is the upcoming Accorded Basic Conventions of Inter-Realm Conflict. Since one of the few principles in the original documents forming Kaisa was the outright banning and outlawing of such conflict, this is a move that no one ever wanted to see happen. However, the ancient empire has successfully played on the fears of many of the smaller star-bound level governments that, without such a conceit to the nature of reality and governance, when war eventually did break out, ban or not, it would be a total war. With the known existence of ships that can literally crash through a planet, survive the ordeal intact, and be able to repeat the fact, it didn't take much to get most to agree that an established rule set needed to exist beforehand, or else the gods would no doubt be involved. While the gods are in large part venerated and celebrated by and across the realms, the ancient empire is not so positively inclined to them, and all wish to avoid their direct intervention in mortal matters as much as possible, as their intervention is often seen as whimsical or perhaps mercurial, with results neither predictable nor reliable. So, in keeping with its stated goals of maintaining relations and preventing any conflict that would necessitate such an intervention, and after a great deal of delay and red tape, the Grand Council approved the creation of Abco Urk. The discussions are still being held, and the final wording of the document is not yet set. However, it is likely that it will be codified within the next few months if not a year at the most. While the Avco Urk, so long as it is observed and enforced, will ensure battles between the powers, will not leave realms contested a wasteland, and that civilian casualties are going to be at a minimum, it is also a fact that even before it has been finished, much less signed into law, several new alliances have formed and elevated themselves to free well status in preparation for the passing of Abco Urk. This is in large part due to the proposed restrictions on how aid to and of warring parties of differing ROSs, proposed in large part to avoid escalations of conflicts from local matters into interstellar affairs. Funded by its member states, each Kaisa body is built to serve the needs of its people with as little restrictive means as possible. This does include contributing to the Kaisa controlled and maintained realm defense fleets that protect their areas of control. The RDFs are organized, trained, and commanded at the star bound Kaisa level, but are supplied with ships and other equipment by delegation of the Grand Council. Each system is allotted a basic fleet, with additional vessels and equipment available for requisition by those systems with a need for and ability to maintain and afford them. These fleets are de facto neutral in all matters between recognized sovereignties and are far more often engaged in anti-piracy and rescue operations than anything involving multiple member states. Notably, as with the next set of assets nominally under the purview of Kaisa, the ancient empire does not receive and has never requested any form of RDF presence within their systems. As the RDFs were formed in direct response to the incursions and assaults of the ancient empire during the Scriptorum War, this is both not a shock, and yet a matter of some concern to many. 
The final set of matters that Kaisa and the Grand Council level concerns themselves with that we will go over today is that of the Expedus fleet and its defense fleet, the EDF, as well as the Praetor-centric Pathbreaker Corps. While all three of these have their own organization and command structure, they nominally are under the advisement and command of the Kaisa Grand Council. In reality, however, Kaisa may make suggestions and requests of these three fleets, but it is the Expedus Fleet Conclave, which serves as the interforce body responsible for the various needs and directions of these three fleets, has no less than half a dozen of the Divine serving as either captains or commanders of these mighty vessels. The final decisions are in no way bound by the orders and directives of Kaisa, as they ultimately report to a much higher power. Now, this does not mean that most, if not all, the discoveries and advances made by the fleet are withheld and not shared, as in fact such matters are often directly forwarded to Kaisa as soon as they are found. But it does mean in matters of priority or direction, Kaisa has very little control without being able to display good cause to try to countermand or instruct one of the Divine. Speaking of the Divine, as a part of Kaisa's formation was to prevent matters from reaching the point where the gods needed to intervene, it may not come as too great of a surprise that while having no direct representation or voting power within Kaisa, each Kaisa body has an open seat for avatars, high clerics, or perhaps even the gods themselves to appear and render opinions or advice on matters that are before the council in question. Again, this seat has no true power, but the visitation of the divine has served as a timely influence on matters, imparting insight or wisdom that has seen many issues resolved with a speed and minimum of effort compared to what would be otherwise required. Kaisa is fully cognizant of the fact that the gods beyond their duties of protection and defense of the realms, each have matters that they are personally in charge with or otherwise involved in. In these roles, speaking as to the matters of their divine interest or domain, the gods can both help and use Kaisa to effect changes or remedies that are needed with much less effort and confusion than might otherwise be possible. From its origins in the ashes of a divine war, to its welcoming of those very divine combatants to matter of counsel and leadership, Kaisa has grown and adapted to the changing shape of the realms, and is by far the best hope for maintaining a united realms under one banner, even if the upcoming Ab Koerk will allow for internal contests to become more strident and violent. How the Council will continue to do so in the face of an oncoming storm that our heroes are set to battle is something we shall discover together, my new guests, regular visitors, and perceptive patrons. I now hope you have a better understanding of how the realms, through Kaisa, governs itself and the many, many billions that live within the realms of Jamamar. I want to thank each of you for your time, your interest, and your support of the realms. Until you next make your way back to the library for your next entry, I have, as always, been the recorder. And by the nine and four, be well, take care of yourselves, and each other. If you'd like to contribute to the further exploration and explanation of the realms, please consider leaving a comment, a like, and sharing the video around. I read all the comments and make efforts to reply to each. Thank you for helping to grow the channel and know I look forward to each and every one of your comments. Other methods of support can be found in the channel's description. Thank you for watching.